Hi everybody, welcome back to 100% Mags. I know I've been away from YouTube for a little bit, over a week now since I was last on YouTube. And um, a lot's happened in that week, of course. Uh, the Premier League is coming back on the 17th. And, you know, Matty Longstaff as well is being linked with a move to uh, Udinese too. Um, so... We're going to talk about that, of course, in the stream today. Uh, we're also going to talk about um, the American as well, uh, who has put paperwork in with Company's House. And it looks like he's pretty desperate to get the team from uh, Mike Ashley, but we will have to see what happens with that. Um, so I'm going to put the link down into the chat. Uh, anybody that wants to come in, of course, is more than welcome to. Uh, it's not going to be a very long stream today, of course. I'll probably be streaming until about four o'clock and then that'll be it. Uh, but still a stream at the end of the day. Uh, so I'll be putting the link into the chat now. Anybody that wants to get in can get in. I can see that Retro NUFC uh, G wants to come into the chat and, of course, uh, Toonami TV as well, which is Sharky. Uh, if you want to come into the chat as well, mate, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I'll be putting the link into the chat now. Uh, it should be in there for anybody that wants to join. Um, so, basically, like I say, I'm only going to be streaming to about four o'clock. Uh, hopefully, we can get a bit of a discussion going uh, on the latest talk of the takeover. Talk about Matty Longstaff in that as well. Uh, and, of course, the Premier League kicking off on the 17th, uh, which is not long here now. I think about six days uh, correct us if I'm wrong on that one. Uh, just waiting for uh, Retro NUFC to join the chat. I can see that he's in there now. Uh, Jay, mate. Morning, mate. Uh, how are you doing? You doing well, yeah? My bar, my bar, I've a nice cup of tea. Keeping safe. I can see that Sharky's oh, just man. come in as well. I just had him. Hi, Sharky, mate. Doing all right, yeah? Uh, yeah, good afternoon. How are you doing? How are we doing, Abbott? Not bad. Not bad. Keep myself safe, home. Thank you. Just trying to get along uh, this pandemic and all that and try and get through it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, look I'm looking forward to the football comeback. I'm not going to lie. I know it's behind closed doors, but it's just good to try and get the season c concluded, isn't it? I mean, can't just let the season yeah. fizzle out the way it has. It's been I think it's quite a good uh, idea, to be honest, that they have brought it back. I thought it was a little bit too late. You know, they should have probably just ended it. But now that it's coming back, you know, you can kind of see why it's a good reason for it to be coming back. Uh, because we definitely need to end the season. We need to uh, get that reassurance, you know. It's just one of them things. I think there's too much money in the Premier League. I just don't think they can afford to not concede, uh, to concede defeat. You know, they want to get the season done. Obviously, if we don't yeah. get the season done, there's going to be a lot of lawsuits from different clubs to say, well, hold on, you know, we, we we don't want to be relegated on, you know, points per game. We'd rather stay out the, yeah. you know, the last nine games, obviously 10 games for the, the, the two fixes that are going to, you know, go ahead on Wednesday. And the same yeah. with the championship, you know, the money between the championship and the Premier League is extraordinary. You know, the, the, there's still games, yeah. big games in the championship that need to be played on TV. You know, you've got your Sky Sports, you've got your BT Sports as well. There's lawsuits everywhere. So I think, They've got no choice but to try and get it done while it's safe to do so. And they've obviously given the dates of uh, next Wednesday onwards, 17th. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, um, your opinions on Matty Longstaff. Do you think he should go to Udinese or do you think he should say, to be honest, I want to see I think he's staying. I think it's just all talk personally. I can't see Newcastle United letting a good talent in Matty Longstaff leave. I know. It is difficult to play Sean and Matty in the same squad. I mean, that's been proven yeah. over the season. But the lad's got, you know, undoubtedly good ability. You know, he's a, a young lad. He's, you know, he scored against Manchester United both home and away. So he's got that experience already of playing in the big games in the Premier League. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, haggling over, what, 20 grand, 30 grand a week, I think he's yeah. worthy of that. You know, this, this is a lad who in the next two, three seasons is going to be worth £30 million plus. And we don't yeah, want to be... Exactly. You know that club that just accepts the you know the four hundred thousand uh, pound compensation when he's one of our own and he wants to play. I mean, 
we really don't know the the whole background behind it. It could be his agents maybe trying to talk him into going to Italy. It could be just you know sources elsewhere. There was rumours that he goes to Udinese, but then shipped off to Watford because Watford and Udinese have got that con- partnership yeah. connection. But personally, yeah. I don't know. I, th- I think it's out of our control at the minute with the pandemic. I think he'll stay. Mm-hmm. You think he's there? What about I think, Yoshi? A, I, think, I, think, I think he's too important. He's too important to the club. And he, he, uh, he's, you know, he scored, he scored a goal against Man United. He's a talented lad. He's talented. The ball from Newcastle, the ball from us. So why not? Why just keep, just, just keep him? him I team. mean, if, if he was to leave, if he was to go to Udinese, then I wish him all the very best. I've got no like bad words about him. I've got nothing, I've got oh, nothing yeah, good definitely. things to say about both Matty and Sean. You know, I've been mm-hmm. with you under 23s and. You know, they speak to you, you know, just like normal lads, like Wood. And I just think, you know, I understand if he goes because he's going to go to Italy, he's going to learn new culture, you know, he's going to get used to a different yeah. league. It's going to be competitive. Udinese on a bad side, you know, I think they're building. And um, regular football as well, do you know what I mean? I, I know he hasn't played a lot this season, but I'd like to think that the club maybe will offer him maybe that 20 grand a week, whatever it is they're going to pay. Otherwise, if yeah. we just let him slip through our fingers, then it could be a case of... You know what if? Ah, exactly. Um, talking about the takeover. Um, what's your thoughts on this American? I don't know. I think I pe- people are ruling it out far too quickly. Like people are so fixed on the Saudi takeover. Personally speaking, I've sort of washed my hands with it now. I think it's been going on too long, and that sounds harsh to say. I mean, it's never really progressed. We're hearing one yeah. story, then we're hearing another one. Honestly, I'm just looking forward to the season, just recommencing, and we'll just see where it goes. I th- people are saying it could take longer than whenever, but we've been down this route so many times before where they've built something up like a story of a takeover and nothing's gone through. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but for me, my attitude now is what happens, happens. I'm just going to yeah. accept what we've got now, and we're just going to have to get behind Steve Bruce and the lads. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. if this takeover doesn't happen, you can't blame Steve Bruce and you can't blame the squad for this. It's all down to those at the top, and it's all down to the Premier League, and Amanda Stavely. Yeah, I don't know what Premier your thoughts League. are on it, but I've just not. That's the reason why I haven't reported on it for the past couple of weeks because I, I think it's getting yeah. really boring. Like yeah. the Premier League, you've got Richard Masters. He's had two interviews since the last time I did a video. And in both them interviews, he's him and hard around the whole takeover. And it's just something he should be looking at and really coming out in the press and saying, oh, this is what's going on. Because at the end of the day, football in my eyes, is the fans. Without the fans, you don't have football. Well, that's you, know. you, you, you could talk about NDAs and whatever, but the, the, the point is, like it, it would happen to Newcastle where a takeover would just drag on as long as it has done. I mean, other clubs, they can get them done within a couple of months. Yeah, you can do your your relations to like Southampton, but at the end of the day, they each club has their own way of doing things, how they process a takeover. For us, yeah. it's always been like difficult, and you just wonder again if it's another one that bites the dust. Is, is it another one that's just a case of we're in a pandemic? There's no football. There's nothing to talk about. We've had these yeah. before with you know potential new rumours of takeovers. Is it just another yeah. one to try and fill the fans in with entertainment over the over the course of a very very um, difficult time. time for everybody? It is. It's a hard time, especially no with football. like BZG. You had that it, during it, the entire summer. <laughs> and then just went and pitted away and it was just gone. It, it, this literally looks like it could be similar. Hopefully not, because, you know, this is possibly the best chance of a takeover ever. <laughs> but, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I do want the takeover, but I think there's a line between, like, how long can you stay patient for? How long, Yeah, I've seen a bit. Uh, like, how, how long can you, you know, believe what the news are saying? How, how far can you believe of the Premier League or... Are they doing the best to try and get every angle out of what's going on in the background? Obviously, there's you know loads of protests, which I think you know they're entitled to their their, their point of view, you know, with the with the um, rights etc. But yeah. for now, this this is just it's every single week. Oh, it'll be done by this week. It'll be done by the next week. It'll be done by the week yeah. after. It's yeah, just it's incredibly boring. Change, does it? It's just getting never boring. To change. Yeah. Um, the thing I've been watching is uh, same thing as what you said. Just we need. You. It needs to get done. Would it get done? Would it not get done? So we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. I just think the way I look at it, if it doesn't get done before uh, the season re- recommences, then I think either way, our job is to get behind the manager and get behind the, the, the squad because they need our help. Even though we're on 35 points, yes, we might need a win, 
maybe two wins or a win and a couple of draws, but we still need yeah. to get behind the, the lads. And at the end of the day, it's not their fault. You know, we've had this before. And I know there's a few fans will say, well, once we get back to the stadium, I'm not going to go back. I'm sorry to say it, but I will be one of them. I will go back. I've only boycotted this season. I will go back and get I'm behind Steve Bruce. Back, I will get behind the lads. And I think at the end of the day, everybody, you know, is entitled to their, their opinion on how they're going to, you know, boycott. And if they don't want to go back, that's completely up to them. Yeah. But, you know, they the thing is, I'm them. getting older and wiser now to know that your know, 13 years of Mike Ashley, nothing's going to change. You know, we're... I've accepted that we're just battling mid-table every season, yeah. battling relegation. But with this club, you just don't know what's going to happen because we've had a fifth-place finish before. You know, we've had a quarter-final this season, so anything's possible. But yeah. my my thoughts, if this takeover doesn't go through, don't have a go at Steve Bruce and don't have a go at the squad because it's not their problem. It's Mike Ashley, the mm. Premier League, Amanda Stavely. All of them need to come together and say, well, yeah, what exactly. happened? They do. They I don't think there's, there's, a, there's... My, my a, opinion, like, Go on. I think I think straight away, like as soon as the new owners do come in, they'll probably not want Steve Bruce there, which we've talked about this in the past. I definitely don't think they'll want Steve Bruce. Um in the managers that we've been linked with, you know, like Pochettino, uh Rafa, you know, there's so many big names that's been linked to it. There's even been talk of uh, Zidane. As well, coming in, you know. But that's um, the thing. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk it. about. So as I say, I don't want to talk like this. Is a takeover is yeah. going to happen because a lot of our fans at the minute. And I don't want to criticize all fans, but everybody's talking like a takeover is going to happen. It's not guaranteed. The takeover is not guaranteed. Like this has been going on for months and weeks now, or weeks and months, and it's a case of it's not guaranteed. Like that's why I don't want to talk as if we're we're we're, we're guaranteed it because that's where fans yeah. will get disappointed. Like I'm level headed to think. You know, if it doesn't happen, then we've got to accept what we've got. Unfortunately, if you love the club, you'll accept for what we've got. You know, you'll yeah. accept that we've got to just get behind the side. But if we get the takeover, then yeah, we can oh, hopefully sure. try and look to get a new manager. Personally, I said I'd love to try and keep Steve Bruce for six months, maybe give him a chance. I think every manager deserves a chance, but yes. everyone's different. I respect every fan's opinion. If they want to get Rafa yeah. in or Potts straight away, I'd love to see it. But as I've always believed if, if a takeover happens, give Bruce that benefit of the doubt to see if he can get some players in to maybe play attacking football, I think. But under Mike Ashley, I think his hands are tied in terms of how he, he goes about with the squad, the quality that he's got. You know, and he's, he's lucky to have players like, say, Maximin and stuff, but without him bailing them out every every game, you know, with his pace and stuff and his ability, Almiron, you know, I yeah. think we're stuck. But, but that's down to the board, though. It's down to the down to the quality of the squad. You know, the, with a the, with the takeover, we've got, we've got a chance of getting better players in. And I think, you know, Rafa's been given a bit of criticism. I don't want Rafa because he plays negative defensive football, but you got to remember, yeah. he got us promoted with a championship squad, which I still think we've got now. And he can't go out and attack, you know, Premier League sides because we've got to be defensive. Otherwise, we're going to get relegated. You know what I mean? But with a takeover, we've got that chance, exactly. like Rafa or Bruce, to play attacking football. Wow. Uh-huh. We've got to like, give him a chance. We've got to give all the a chance. But Stay the thing is, I, I don't want to talk like we're, we're, we're getting a takeover because... You know, we've had this with the BZ yeah. group. We've had that with, with um, Peter Ken, you know. We're, we're definitely getting this takeover, you know. This is what we're going to have to spend and it's never gone through. So, for me, I'm sort of yeah. level-headed. I'm staying grounded. I agree with that. Like Ian Smith as well, he's just said the same. Uh, he agrees with you on that. You don't want to 100% say that to guarantee that we're definitely getting takeover. You know, yeah. nobody wants yeah, to agree. say that because it's just... A silly thing to say, to be honest, because we've been there before the BZG, we've been before BZG. But the thing you know, is, Ocal, can can you understand why I haven't done any videos for the past couple of weeks? Because it's the point yeah. now where I'm getting tired of it. It either happens or it doesn't. And I think we've just got to accept for what we've got, unfortunately. I mean, if you're a true supporter of the club, like yeah. I say, you, you can't blame Steve Bruce or the or the current uh, squad. You know, at the end of the day, they're trying their very best for what they've they've got around them. And yeah, they're just you know, played, yes, um, you know the thing is I want the takeover. I'm I'm like every fan, I don't like Mike Ashley. We've had 13 years of utter dross. But the, Mike Ashley is a very, very difficult man to deal with. Don't know what his mindset is. We don't we can't read him, he never communicates. It's basically on Twitter, hashtag no comment. According to rumors, of course, it's just rumors. Uh but Mike Ashley is supposedly the first thing he's doing when he comes back from America is going to be talking with the Premier League, asking where the takeover is actually at. Uh, if that's the case, you know, then... That concerns me. 
That I, really, really I concerns me. <laughs> that concerns me. I don't me know what to say on that. that. That concerns me. Like, if he's basically saying, is that Mike actually just, you know, saying, oh, well, actually, was something happening or was or was it just a rumours of a takeover? I don't know. It, it's, it, it is a difficult one. But if they're saying, well, what's going on with the Premier League? It could be the Premier League are looking at, you know, the human rights side of things. You know, they don't want to make yeah. a, a, a damaging decision, which is going to damage the reputation of the league. Yes, you we could say, well, actually, other owners have, you know, some of them have probably got alleged, you know, criminal backgrounds, but the, their owners of different football clubs. There's been a lot of corruption at different football clubs where some of them, like Berry, have gone out of business, for example, you know, yeah. unfortunately. But the Premier League, obviously, they, this is a, a takeover, which... They've never had to deal with. Well, they've never dealt with before. It's it's, it's worth a yeah. lot of money, and obviously they they've got to try and make the right decision that is best for Newcastle United and for the sake of the Premier League. It it, it yeah. really is a difficult one. Um, I'll accept yeah, it. Like, of course, of course, I, I will. Of course, like I'll accept 10 it. Ten times or something in it of uh, Man City's. It's like ten times the wealth of Man City. So it's just got to, they've crazy, got to be careful. Crazy money. Like, They've got to be careful with that as well. Obviously, with the amount of money coming in, you know, it's going to Newcastle. We can go out and you know, you, you've obviously got the the FS, FSG, but you know, the thing is, we, we can with all that money, we can go sort of get around it. You know, what I mean, we can spend on big name players, yeah. but that's a thing at the minute. I don't want to talk about like what players we could sign, what managers. I've talked about the managers, but I don't want to talk about like what could happen because we just don't know where we're at. Like at this moment in time, it's Mike yeah, Ashley, and that's what we've got to deal with. And obviously. With the rumours going around of um, you know, wanting to sell up, we don't even know what fans are going to do about their season tickets. Obviously, I boycotted the season, so I'm okay. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, the club don't owe me anything. But you kind of feel sorry for the fans who bought season tickets this season, and he's also taken money for next season season tickets, the Man City game, yeah, the general sale. What's going to happen with that? Yeah. Well, on that, uh, they have said that obviously it all depends on if the Saudis actually get in and own in the club, but they have said that they will be willing to give £200 refunds to Newcastle fans. So that's pretty much, I think, about half, like 50% of the value of the season tickets being given back to fans, which not a lot of clubs are doing that. So that would be a big thing, obviously, but... It all depends on the Saudis getting in again, which is another. Well, Sunderland uh, today like, they've just at the minute. Sunderland today they've just partnered up with Ticketmaster. They have basically said they're refunding all of their the fans because their season was curtailed, which is understandable. I think all of the other yeah. Premier League clubs have done their refunds. I think we're the only one outstanding that hasn't been given refunds. Obviously, yeah. like I say, I can't speak for myself, but it is a bit disrespectful towards other fans. But what I will say is just stay patient. I think by law, there's got to be some sort of refund there, like for the fans, you know, can't just take money away because, for one, that's fraud, theft. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, fraud, 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 fraud to, a, to a degree because of the, I think it's in the terms and conditions they don't actually have to give a full refund on on the, how much they've paid for the tickets and what's outstanding, but they do have to give something back, you know, to, to the yeah. fans for the remainder of the season. But what I, what I don't understand is, and what I disagree with is taking money away from next season's uh, season tickets when there's no guarantees that fans are going to go back. Hopefully, we'll get back soon. Hopefully, it's September, October time. But again, like anybody, I'm just guessing. Yeah. Right. We'll read out some of these comments down the side because we've got a couple of them. Um, We've got Ian Smith. uh, He's agreeing with you on uh, the takeover talk. Uh, Then we've got Ian Smith again saying that I think I do. uh, That said, I've do think we will be taking over soon uh, if it's not by the Saudis. So he agrees with you on that. Uh, then we've got uh, Joe, who's a great YouTuber as well. You can go check him out. He uh, does Fortnite content. Uh, really good lad. Uh, he's seen Mike Ashley out. And then, of course, there's Ian Smith again. Uh, any takeover will be celebrated. If it's not the Saudis, then so be it. We w- can still be excited by other less rich people, which I fully agree with, to be honest. But you know, you can't help but dream of that Saudi takeover and that big money. And well, talking the about the so, sorry, Carl, you you were just talking about the the American owners. I think that is that what you were going to go on to. Yeah, yeah. I was basically, I was basically going to say, and a lot of fans, uh, I spoke about it on my channel, oh, about a month month ago now, when I said. Yes, you know it'd be great to have these Saudis in, but everybody was so mm. fixated on the on the Saudis. We can't rule out any buyer in the background because you've got to remember if this doesn't go through and you didn't have any of them in the background, any potential buyer, 
we're stuck with Mike Ashley. But the positive is, if somebody's waiting in the wings, very. I think these owners are very similar to Liverpool in how they operate. And yeah. if if this doesn't go through, the yeah, they might not be as wealthy as this as the Saudis. But if it gives us a, a fresh direction, yeah, you know, I'm not expecting you know, an instant turnaround with potential new owners. It's going to take a while. But I don't think we can rule any potential owner out in the background. I don't Good think point. that's right. Good point. I Good don't think so, Dave. No, to be honest, you've got to look at all aspects, haven't you, really, at the end of the day? Because, like you say, if the Saudi one doesn't go through and we've turned we're back on the other ones, then they could easily walk away and say, well, you didn't want me. You know, we don't want to come and buy your club. And then we'd be left with Ashley, you know, and that's something that we obviously don't want <laughs> to be left obviously, with Ashley. He, he, the thing, he, he generally wants to sell the club, but he's obviously trying to get the, the right price. I, I believe, you know, I, well, I can't legit say for sure that there's been a £70 million deposit. I mean, we don't know if that's legit or not. I mean, nobody's come out and said anything. That's why I can't really fully believe it, because there's been no comment from Newcastle. There's been no comment from the Premier League. No. You know, you have to be sort of careful like who you believe on Twitter and who you believe on any sort of social media because yeah. you know people can just do and say anything for clicks. That's what journalists are about. They're about the clicks. They're about who's better than who. And that's my opinion on them. I mean, I respect some of them, but not all of them. But what I don't understand is, is when you get so-called people saying, oh, these are respected journalists. Well, if they're very respected, then I Mine. think this takeover probably would have happened by now. You know, people were saying about a month yeah. ago, oh, Oh, it's definitely true from these respected journalists. Well, if they, like I say, if they were so respected, then they would be telling the truth. And at this moment in time, nobody knows. Nobody knows who's telling the truth and who's telling lies. And that's why yeah. I, try, I tend not exactly. to look on Twitter too much because I just think half the things he hears a lot of tosh. It, it's crap. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's true. true. It's true. It is, it's that no wonder I keep mm-hmm. away from Twitter because I think honestly, like I don't, I don't know how people can find the time to say, "Oh, the takeover's happening," but it's not. Oh, the, this is definitely happening. Oh. I've seen such and such, you know, at the football club's training ground, and it wasn't even true. It's like, how do you find the time? To be exactly. so naive. It's just pathetic, really. Um, talking about the Premier League coming back, uh, mm. obviously, we've got some tough games still to play. Um, what are your thoughts heading into the remaining games of the Premier League season? How many points do you think we'll be able to get? And where do you think that we'll be able to finish? Two minutes. Can I pass a couple of minutes out? Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm pretty positive, if I'm honest with you, uh, Mags. I think, you know, we've had three months away from uh, football now. I think the lads look in good spirits. They look fit and healthy. They look ready to go. I don't see why from the last nine games that we can, you know, play to win each game. I think, you know, behind closed doors, yes, it's going to be difficult and we need the fans. That's understandable, but... You know, you look at somebody like Joe Linton, who's a confidence player. He's been scoring in a couple of pre-seasons against Middlesbrough yeah. and obviously yeah. the, the main squad. Um, I think we could win. I said we could win between four and five games. I think we could pick up between 12 and 15 points. So I think, we can get, you know, we've got 35 points at the minute. But if we can get, you know, 47 to 50 points, why not? Why, why can't we finish, finish the season strong? Yes, we're not favourites to get into the top 10, but I think it's possible. You know, even if we don't, if, if 50 points isn't, I even say 47, 50 points isn't top 10, you know, that's been a good, for me, yeah. that's what we should be aiming for, at least 50 points. Saying, so, yeah, to try and get that top 10 uh, spot. Well, Danny Rowe has extended his loan deal to end the season. Well, they have to, because yeah. you've, got to, you've got to conclude the season. Unfortunately, that's where the season's been extended. But in terms yeah. of like, you know, each game, yes, it's going to be difficult without fans. But I believe that the attitude of the players, they, they all want to play for Bruce. I think they all want to, you know, they all want to stake their claim. You see them in training, they're all energetic, they're all up for it. And uh, I think, you know, in difficult times, it, you know, it, it is going to be difficult for the players to be, you know, 100% motivated in each game. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I, I believe in the lads. You know, I believe that we can go out there and, you know, we can, you know, give a good show for self. I mean, we've got some tough fixtures, but think about it. We need. Theoretically, we need 40 points, so we've got five five points to get. I reckon mm-hmm. four, we're, we're definitely going to need more than 40, I would say. But yeah, you know, exactly. we, could, we, we could be we could be safe by by Wednesday. You know, we we'll beat the two, the, the two home games, the one against um, Sheffield United, which won't be easy, by the way. And then we've got Villa. Beat both of them. We're on yeah. 141 points. Sure. We've still got some tough ones in there as well, like Man City. Um, I believe we've yeah. still got. Game against I, still, Arsenal, I, I, still, I still believe that we can go out and get get results there. I mean, Man City, the you know, the league could have been won by then for Manchester, for Liverpool 
and Man City might not have much to play for apart from top four, which they're going to get anyway. I just think, yeah. you know, we'll go, why can't we go to the Etihad and get a, get a point at least? You know, we can go Bournemouth on a Wednesday night at six o'clock is a bit extreme, but given the fans aren't there. But I, honestly, I, I, it's going to be strange for all all clubs. I think there's a there's a chance for everybody to pick up points. I don't think any any clubs really got an advantage on anybody. The fitness levels aren't going to be aren't going to be there, but there's five subs, so you can make you know, up to five in, in the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think in every game, I think well, I've got to stay positive. I believe you know we, we should go out there and try and win games and try and surprise you know um, a lot of people. The one I think the one problem for Newcastle with the whole games like that, uh, with the remaining games, that obviously the fans are not going to be there, so we're not going to have like that added advantage. Yeah, uh, what we we'll always have when we go to away games. And of course, they're talking about moving the Liverpool game uh, because they think that's going to be protests over, you know, we're, well, celebrations rather over, we're getting taken over. Uh, you know, do they know something that we didn't or something? <laughs> you know, to be honest, uh, I don't I, know I do, why I, they I, want I, to move I, that game. I do agree, like, obviously, with, with the home games and stuff, you know, it's. It, we are like known for our good vocal support and stuff, and it is going to be difficult when we play games at St James. Just knowing that there's going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be nobody there, but there'll be the cardboard yeah. cutouts which are going towards the food bank, which I think is a good thing. But yeah, that's you know, good but, no, but you know what it is. So these players, and I don't want to, I don't think they should be given. There's no excuses. You know, they're on 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 grand a week. I'm sure they they should be able to play. You know, behind closed doors for uh, nine games or more until we can get back to some sort of reality. But I just believe that every game, you know, Steve Bruce will be telling them, you know, let's just give it a roll for the city and just, you know, try and get get three points. If we can't, let's not lose the game. I mean, at the end of the day, it it is going to be a tough watch in terms of the last nine games. But it's a Premier League. That's what I love about the Premier League. It's so unpredictable. But you'd love to see the fans there. But I believe that just, just every game, you know, just go to win. At the end of the day, try and give something back to the fans, even if there's no refunds for now. Yeah. The very yeah. least the players can do is just give it their absolute all each game, you know, and improve that, you know, the free month of, do you know what, in a sense, the free month that we've been away from football, the likes of Joe Linton and players like that might have actually watched a few Premier League clips to try and learn where they've went wrong this exactly. season. They might have given a chance to be better and Joe Linton scored a few goals, albeit against Middlesbrough and obviously against our, our current side. But, you know, that's confidence yeah. that we could take into well, the uh, Sheffield United. Pretty- well, I didn't get to see the Middlesbrough game, but I did see the um, I did, clips I didn't online. See it. That's what I've seen. And we actually seemed to do pretty well in what clips I did see. You know, Joe yeah. Linton's goal was absolutely fantastic. Probably one of the best goals he's scored this season for me. Um, <laughs> Joe Linton, is, uh, Al Mirren as well, uh, had a great goal in the game. Um, and Mutu as well had a really good one. Um, well, that's, not saying well. that, that, that's good um, for Mutu though. That's good to bring bring them back like it's a bit of confidence because Mutu was nowhere to be seen before all this kicked off. You know, Joe Linton was obviously his confidence was low. It's a chance for, for all of the players now to try and stake a claim for the next, you know, coming games coming up. Yeah, get yeah, a bit of confidence in the team again, but a confidence in the team. But that confidence that were hard before this all happened. The they weren't putting on the lads yeah. they're on TV, they won TV for free. And Sky, it's but how they're doing it this season. No, this season, no, you, you just gotta look at people like Ozil, who he doesn't want to give our money for the NHS. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got Matty Longstaff, he's given over his money, at least mm-hmm. half of his money for the NHS. He's barely getting anything to begin with, and he's given over money. You've got Mazur Ozil giving hardly any money over. Um, you know, there's other players out there as well, not just Ozil, uh, that don't want to give over money. Um, mm-hmm. I agree with Dan, uh, Danny Rose on him um, cautious whether or not to come back to playing in that. He's, you know, he's but back, at the yeah, end of back, the day, you're a professional now, he's, he's, footballer. He's back in training now, though. He's back playing. Yeah, Danny yeah. Rose is a player we need to have. That team we've got, it needs it needs that on the game. We had that this season. Before this happened, we had a, we had a, we had a good run. So yeah, South that. Southampton was where uh, was where last winner was away from home. It seems like ages since we played Southampton, wasn't it? Oh, no. it really was good. We should have won by more of that. that as well. Exactly. I, I think it was a good game. I, I think if we can try and finish off where we left off, but then again, that's going to be difficult when you haven't played for three months as well. It, it feels like a, a long summer, like no football. But then that's mm-hmm. the strange thing, you know. Once we get the season done by July, they say by the end of July. You've obviously got August. I reckon there'll be like a month of like no football, and then you'll have the yeah. the 
season kicking off in September, but there was there was talking about the the window maybe being extended till October. It's 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 all strange at this moment in time, isn't it? It's, there's it's just no so strange in a, in a weird time. And obviously, like fans going back as well. Nobody knows when the fans are going to be going back either. So, uh, yeah, obviously, exactly. the prime minister is obviously easing certain things down. But yeah, sure. I don't know. It's I, I've always said, you know, they were saying, oh, we'll we'll let so many fans back into the stadium at a time. I've always said if, yeah. if fans if fans can't go back to the stadium, if certain ones can't go back, then you either let fans in or you don't at all because you can't discriminate against other fans. You can't say, well, actually, these can go in, but these other fans can't. You know, you either exactly. you keep keep fans away until it's safe to do so, and then when it's safe to do so, let fans back in and support the support the side. I, I don't fully agree with that, like to be honest, because it's know, so honestly, dangerous to be allowing the fans in right now. No, but that's like going to Newcastle versus. Let's, let's, let's just say next season is a game on this. We're going to stay up. Say we're playing Brighton at home, for example. 52,000 fans would normally be there. Actually, just to let you know, there's only 30,000 Newcastle fans allowed and only so many Brighton fans allowed in. You either just don't let any fans in at all or you, or you let fans in. Exactly. Arsenal Vlogs is in the chat and uh, he's saying that he thinks uh, the fans will come back in 2022. No, nah, it's too bad. It'll be back in the game before that. That, that I think it'll be that. before that, like mm-hmm. definitely. Um, I, I I reckon that the people that there's even rumours go around even September, but when the new season yeah. starts, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised um, if, if we do. I'm going to be ending the stream in the next uh, about three minutes or so. Um, yeah, well, I, well I'll, so I'll let you go, we'll call anyway. Have a bit of chat. Yeah, I All right, no problem. Uh, just have a little bit of a chat between us whilst. Uh, We'll wait for the stream to get to that point. <laughs> well, anyway, right, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. Take it easy. What are you doing? Stay yeah, safe, guys. See you later, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Uh, IG, um, so how have you been? My bad, you know, just getting there, a bit stressed, dude. Um, Coming up on the new it's logo. I'm trying to do me a logo again, but it just got us got out of here, just went here, man, just. I could be off. I've been trying to work on that part. It's I'm crazy, it. isn't it? Well, the logo to do it. It's just some crazy it. stuff. I've been doing my logo. I'm, I'm trying to, as you know. The one I've got now, it, got it's too, I think I've done it too big, too too dark on it. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to mind it's gone. Blank in the minute. Blank. I'll have a chat with you after uh, this. Actually, I might end the stream now. I might just end the stream now. Um, right, thanks to everybody for coming on to the stream. Uh, Chaz to Sharky for coming on the stream. Go subscribe to his channel, Toon Army TV. Uh, great YouTuber, absolutely fantastic lad. Uh, thanks to Jay as well uh, for coming on to the stream. Chaz for coming on, Jay, mate. Yeah, boy. Go subscribe to Jay, uh, Jay's channel. Absolutely amazing uh, guy as well. Well, really good YouTuber. Um, and please subscribe to my channel as well. We're on the road to 500 subscribers, so hit that subscribe button and get subscribing. It's free at the end of the day. It helps the channel grow and it helps support Newcastle fans and me in general. Till next time, I'll see you all there and how well the lads. How well the lads.